Hi. Ouch. Hi. My name is Jasmine, and um, today I'd like to talk to you guys about a picture that I've seen more and more. And it's a picture that makes me a little grim, which is why I'm giving this talk in the first place. I'm frequently hearing the phrase, you're being emotional, toyed around. Um, I'm always being told that I should be less emotional, that my emotions are something that I should be learning how to keep at a distance, especially within school contexts. I'm always being told that my emotions are something that I should learn to keep tied down somehow. Now, I didn't used to have a problem with this, but at some point I realized that there was something very, very wrong with teaching children that their emotions are something that they should learn how to keep at a distance, that their emotions are something that they should be learning how to keep tied up and buried. This ultimately teaches kids that their emotions are something that they should be ashamed of. And this teaches them to be ashamed of themselves. Now our emotions, it's a bit of an abstract term, so whenever we talk about it, people are very quick to dismiss it by saying that you know they're just feelings. But let me just take you back to that sentence. They're not just feelings. We never really take the time to figure out what it is that emotions are, what do they mean to us. Um, our emotions are very, very important. They're, ultimately, they drive our every action. They, they're the reason we are moved. They're the reason we are different from one another. If you want to see it through more of a practical lens, in 1872, Charles Darwin actually published the expression of emotions um, in man and animals. And in it, he basically spoke about how the expression of emotions is vital for a spe species' survival. Um, the fact that we feel and express fear, love, lust, anger, it's what drives us to perform certain actions and thus keeps our species alive. Um, so our emotions are undeniably there and they're undeniably important. Yet we belittle them and we dismiss them. Um, this sort of stance we have towards emotions and being emotional, it promotes a phobia of sorts of emotions. I'll be the first one to admit that I get scared when I think about being emotional in front of people. I get scared when I think about winding myself up, up emotionally because I know, and I've been told so often, that being emotional isn't something that's good. This is wrong. We shouldn't be ashamed of something that makes us human. Another aspect that adds to this stance we have to emotions is the two-dimensional, shallow way we regard emotions. When we see the word happy and the word sad, we immediately tie negative and positive connotations towards them. We see happy and we think this is a good emotion. When we see bad, when we see sad, we immediately think that this is a bad emotion. This isn't the way we should be regarding emotions. Because we have these negative connotations toward sad feelings, feelings of isolation or pain, we develop consciously and subconsciously a sort of shield. We, we go out of our way to protect ourselves in order not to feel these things. We become hardened, we become harsh, we become cynical, ironic, all to protect ourselves from feeling something that's g genuinely human. There is so much art and music and literature that is centered around the expression of human sadness and pain and isolation. And it's because these emotions are so heavy that we cannot help but be moved by them. And in that, in that genuine human truth, there is beauty. And we should learn how to see it as something beautiful. We should learn how to see our emotions as something that we can use. We shouldn't be seeing them as something that we should be ashamed of, or something that we should be scared of. We should learn how to use them as inspiration and as fuel, ultimately. Now, as I said before, uh, within school contexts, I'm frequently being told, we're all frequently being told, inadvertently, advertently, that in order to do well, in order to be able to focus, we have to distance ourselves from our emotions because emotions make things messy. Now, before we get into this, I'd like to talk about the teaching process because it's a tricky one. Um, in order to be able to develop and to nourish the learning process of a student, it's a lot easier, and the only way you, have, you can do it is um, to simplify it. And this is where criteria come in. What criteria are, basically, are boxes. Um, they're very vibrant descriptions of what a student should be able to show or be capable of in order to be considered academically successful. Now, the problem with these boxes is that they provide very narrow and rigid views on how students should go about learning. They don't 
make space for being human because when it comes down to it, let's be honest, these criteria are not realistic. They provide an unrealistic view of how you should go about learning and discovering things. They promote almost an unhealthy obsession-like stance towards being and learning a certain way. I think that it's very sad, honestly, that our schooling system, one that we're going through every day, promotes this sort of rigid, unemotional, inhumane almost stance towards learning. Um, and I think, this is, I think that this should change. Now, I'd like to share a story at my own expense um, about a math test that I had. Uh, and this math test was the first math test I ever had um, this school year. Um, and I remember studying for this math test with my criteria and while studying I uh, was asking myself why is it that examining conditionings, conditions today promote these sorts of levels of stress? Is that right? We shouldn't be examined and tested under conditions that make us feel this way. This doesn't promote a healthy sort of outlook on life. I was very, very upset, but I kept telling myself that in order to do well, in order to be able to focus and study, I had to ignore these questions. I had to distance myself from what I was feeling and what I was thinking. And so the next day when I came into my test, I realized that I was very, very mad. I was really angry because for the past couple of years of my academic career, I've been doing this. I've been putting aside these questions I have and how I've been feeling in order to do well. And so what I did is I didn't write the math test. Instead, I handed it in a couple of pages, um, expressing, drawing, writing, what it is that I thought was wrong about the way we're tested today. Why I didn't write it and why I thought these conditions within which we have to go to school should be changed for the better. And I gave that in. And I remember feeling really scared because let's face it, there are better ways of expressing an opinion. Um, so I went home and I didn't want to go to school the next day. I was scared that somebody was going to come up to me and I was going to get in lots and lots of trouble and they were going to tell me that I was stupid, my points were irrelevant, that it was pointless, that it was, it was stupid. But the next day when I was sitting in my out class, my math teacher walks in and uh, she asks to speak to me alone. And I remember thinking, okay, this is it, brace yourselves, the moment is coming. But to my utmost surprise, instead of telling me that I was stupid, that my points were irrelevant, and that I was confused, my math teacher took a moment to empathize with me. She told me that, yes, these points are real, and they're relevant. And it's true that it's hard to adapt a system to a wide variety of students. It's hard to make boxes that cannot be applied because humans cannot be put into boxes. But while we were talking about this, um, we were both aware that the conclusion we were gonna have to come to is that these questions, these things that I was thinking about, were gonna have to be put to the side in order for me to do well at school. I was gonna have to distract myself from these truths in order to be able to do well. And I remember feeling very sad that a conversation that could have meant so much in terms of progress in the way we think about things, ultimately meant so little. So you might be wondering, what is it that I want then? What, what am I proposing? What am I trying to achieve with this TED talk? And to be honest, I don't know how it is that we have to change the way we think about things. I don't know how we have to go about changing the school systems, but what I do know is that these topics, these themes, these questions, they're important and they're very real. And we should be thinking about them and talking about them like they're something important, because they are important. If we ever want to provide a world for our kids or their kids, or even us, to live in, within which we can thrive being human and embracing the messiness and the fact that we're emotional, we have to keep talking about it and we have to keep thinking about it. Um, you might say that it's unrealistic, that it's silly, because when it comes down to it, you know, things are the way they are. And it's too hard and it's too messy to change something that's so rigid and solidly set. But, as, as George Bernard Shaw once said, the reasonable man adapts himself to the world. The unreasonable man persists in trying to adapt the world to himself. Therefore, all progress lies within the unreasonable man. 
And in this sense, I hope we can all be unreasonable and continue to try and change things. Because if we just leave things up to the reasonable man, if we all just say, you know, things are the way they are, oh well, nothing's ever going to change. We're going to stay the exact same way we are today. So in conclusion, um, what I'd like, or what I'd hope you guys would take away from this TED Talk, is that not only should we be taught how to accept our emotions as something that's real and important, and we should be taught how to use our emotions, but we should start with ourselves. We should start realizing that our emotions are good. They're what makes us human. And I know it feels awkward, you know, and subconsciously you don't want to be emotional. And you think, you know, I'm not emotional, but everybody's emotional. We're all human. And so we have to take that step, step within ourselves and realize that it's okay. And let yourself feel, and let yourself indulge in your emotions, and let yourself be moved. And ultimately, let yourself express whatever it is that you feel like expressing, because being emotional is part of being human. And we're all human, I hope. So let yourself be human. Thank you. Woo!